All right guys, this week we're back on the truck camper build and we're gonna be installing a full solar power system to this truck. I've uh, been working on the truck kind of off camera all week. I'm gonna go over really quick at the beginning of this video, everything that I've done off camera, get you guys caught up with that because I know you'll have some questions when you spot certain stuff that I've changed. So we'll get you caught up on that. And then I've got an idea for a quick detach wall for this full solar power system so that when we're using it and we're going on these long camping trips, it's gonna be great to have all this in the back of the truck, but I really don't wanna haul all of this you know, full solar system around with me all the time. So I've got an idea where we're gonna have a quick detach system. It'll look good, it'll be kind of more custom, kind of the way all this stuff does. And when we don't wanna take it with us though, we can just pop it out and leave it here. So it should be an easy build, should be a fun build. Y'all stick around. So first I'll show you guys a few little mods that I've done this week to the back of this. If you can see it, it is kind of dark back here. But I've added this little wall here that goes around the bed. If you remember when we built this bed a couple of weeks ago, I just had the mattress kind of sitting on this platform. Well, I wanted to make it look a little bit cleaner, make it so I can kind of tuck the sheets around. And I built this wall. I carpeted it, it goes all the way around and it kind of holds the whole mattress, you know, everything right there in place. And it looks a lot cleaner and a lot more custom. Then I decided to add an area over here to hold a power station. And during the summer, like right now, it holds, as my, it holds my Zero Breeze air conditioner. It just straps to the top of the little bench. It makes it so the vent, I can aim kind of straight up over here and run the AC. But it also gives me a little spot down here to add my little Pecron power station. It slides right in. We kind of, you know, have power right here at the back of the truck is great. I made a little hole here so I could keep, you know, mount stuff, power cables and stuff like that I can kind of throw in there. And I mainly built this box like this so that if I still needed to access, you know, these Tacomas have the 110 hookup in the back back here. If I needed to access that, I could just slide this power box out and get to that with no problem. Nothing's blocked in or anything like that. But it turned out really good. I, I was able to carpet it to match everything. We still got this full storage under the bed and it's really clean. And I also reused, let me turn this main one off. So I put a light back here, as you can see, and I've got it wired in and it's got its own little push button. But as you can see, I found a way to reuse those whip lights that we just pulled off the trailer. Uh, if you follow along, you know, I just removed those whip lights from the kayak trailer. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with them, but now I know exactly what I'm gonna do with them. I used them in the bed of the truck. I've even got the remote still so that we can kind of change the colors if we wanted to. I could dim it down to a red, or you can go crazy and hit it with the old auto. And it does all kind of different modes, which, I'll never probably use any of this besides just the, the plain white, but I can dim it down, get it really nice and low in here. But yeah, so now I've got kind of an ambient light back here with a, without having to look directly at the bulbs. And they worked out great. Didn't have to buy any extra lighting, those whip lights. I knew I'd end up using them somewhere and it worked out really good. So this back area is just about ready, you know, to start camping in. Uh, I mean, the bed's ready, the power's ready, the AC's locked in place, it's good to go. And what's cool is during the winter, we'll take this AC unit out, we'll put it up, and I'll have this whole little bench area here to set my little, I use, what's this thing called over here, the buddy heater. Let's see if I can get it down. This is what I use during the winter, is this little, Buddy heater, yeah, that's what it's called, Mr. Heater. And that thing should work out pretty good. It, it should be able to sit in that same place that the AC is. We'll just set the heater up during the winter and have heat back here. And during the summer, we have AC back here. So this is gonna be a nice little setup. Now, let me go over with you everything that we're gonna be installing in today's video. Most of the stuff you're gonna see here is from a company called Power Queen. They wanted to work with us on this project this year and they have a brand new product that is gonna be a big benefit to this project. And that is their new 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour mini battery. It's the same amp hour as their regular 
but it's 19% smaller. This is a 100 amp hour battery. As you can see, it is super light. It's almost five pounds lighter, I believe, than their other you know, traditional 100 amp hour batteries. And it's smaller, it's thinner, it's gonna be able to fit in a position in the back of the truck, which you know, you wouldn't normally be able to put a battery. Now this is gonna fit right back there because of its size, it's able to fit in there. That's why I'm going with this thing, mainly because it is a really small, lightweight LifePo 4 battery. And you know, since it's lithium, you can actually mount these batteries in any orientation that you want. Uh, this one's gonna be tucked away, it's gonna be hidden, and then we're gonna have it paired up with their 100 amp hour solar panel and their solar controller. This is their Bluetooth version. It comes with its own little Bluetooth adapter that you can plug in, download an app and control and you know keep an eye on your solar charge system. So this is what is gonna be connected to our solar panels and our battery to keep our battery operational. I'm gonna pair their solar controller with this inverter that I picked up off Amazon. I'll have it linked below too. It had some good reviews, I've never used it, but it's gonna give us two AC ports, two USB, ports and a type C port that we can use if we need it right in the back of the truck. And then I've got some wiring, some solar panel connections and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a pretty simple build. Uh, I'm gonna show you really quick where I plan on putting all this stuff, how I plan on putting, putting it there so that it's quick detach. All of this stuff is gonna be kinda tied together and mounted together in one big system that we can pull in and out of the truck. And it should work out pretty good. So check out Power Queen in the video description below. I'll have promo codes and stuff like that under this video. If you're wanting to add something like this, their controllers are amazing. They've got some of the best reviews that you'll find. Their uh, solar panel system, this is a 100 watt. I believe that you can go up to maybe 400 watts with this of solar. Let's see, yeah, 400 watts of solar with this. And so I could, add three more of these panels if I wanted to, to control, you know, to power up this one battery or charge this battery. So check out their solar controllers and their, you know, their batteries, especially this new mini. A lot of you guys are gonna like this. You can basically go with two of these and have 200 amp hours worth of battery for not much bigger than a regular 100 amp hour lithium battery. So that's, that's a game changer right there, I think. But let me show you where we're gonna be mounting all this. All right, to give you guys a quick idea kind of of what's in my head, what we're gonna build today, is I wanna show you where I plan on putting this. So this is usually behind the seat. Now, if you didn't watch a couple of weeks ago, we did a full seat delete on this Toyota Tacoma. I completely removed my rear seat and I built this little area. It holds my camp fridge in the back. It kind of locks it down to the floor there. I've got this elevated area here where a dog bed can go for my dogs or I can use it to strap stuff place for my camera gear, all kind of cool stuff. If you didn't see that video, uh, be sure to go check it out. I'll have it linked here and linked in the video description below. But back here, this wall is still factory. It's what's usually behind the seats of my truck. I wanna utilize this space. Uh, I wanna be able to use this wall to mount the inverter and the solar charger, but I don't want to do any permanent, you know, drills, you know, drilling any holes or anything permanent in this truck. Like I said, we're gonna stick with that same theme. So, I've got these little things that stick off the wall here. I don't even know what you would call them, but it's where the seats actually lock into the truck. I've got one there and then one right over there. And my plan is to build a wall that we're gonna carpet to match this stuff. I've got the same carpet here and we're gonna build a wall that goes across the back back here that slides over these little seat brackets and then we can lock something in, you know, in between the new wall and the seat bracket to lock it in place without doing any holes. And that'll give me a blank canvas here to mount the inverter, the solar controller, not to mention this little area right here that normally wouldn't fit a battery, but since we're using these minis from Power Queen, check this out. The battery fits perfect in that spot. So now we have a 100 amp hour battery in its own little storage area, tucked out of the way. We'll have the controller mounted here above it, the uh, or the inverter here and the solar controller right over here. Let me show you on the, war on the wood. I don't know why I can't talk right now. I kind of got it set up to show you guys what it's gonna look like when we're done. So if you can see, I'm cutting this shape out here. So this will be gone. It's just gonna have this really funny shape, but it is what it is to make sure everything works back there. It should look good when we're done, but we're gonna mount the controller here. The Bluetooth adapter is gonna be mounted here. 
and the inverter will be mounted right here. All of the wires I plan on running into the board from the, you know, the solar charger and the, I mean, the solar controller and the inverter, and they're gonna be all hidden behind it. So it should look really nice and clean when we're done. And yeah, that's the plan. So hopefully we get this thing built and locked in here and we can go try this thing out today. I'm really happy with the way this build is turning out so far. All right, so I'll show you from this side first. I've got a couple of lights hanging in here so you guys can actually see, but I've got the refrigerator going. It's already ice cold in there, and I'm actually running this off of AC right now and not DC. Let's see if I can come through here so you can see it a little bit better. As you can see, I've got the inverter hooked up, and I'll show you up close in just a minute, but. There's the wall that we just built. And you can see now why I made it the shape that I made it. If uh, you were wondering, I wanna be able to get the battery in and out. So you see the battery is directly up under that inverter. And if I'd have built a straight wall, I'd have to remove the wall just to pull the battery in and out. And I didn't wanna do that, but it fits really good in here. Let me show you from the other side. All right, so from this side, you can kind of see, if I didn't explain it well, how I planned on locking this on and off. So I built these little wooden blocks right here. And these, this wall, you've seen me, I made it slotted so that it slides right over top of these little seat belt brackets or seat brackets, you know, whatever they are. It's what used to bolt down the seats. And then when you slide it on there and you push this block down in, it locks it on. And I've got a block on each side that you can pull out and you put it in and it locks the wall on and it doesn't go anywhere. If I wanted to, I could drill a hole and screw it in, you know, once it's locked in. But I think we're gonna be good just like that. All the wires are hidden. I've got two wires coming from the solar controller that goes down to the battery and then two more wires that come off of the controller and they run to this wire that I may have filmed me make. I can't remember, but I ordered, this is like 12 or 15 foot of uh, solar wire and one end had the solar hookups on it the other end i just attached to the solar controller but the reason we're going to be having this in here and always connected is because when we get to camp i can throw the solar panel on the roof or i can prop it up outside this is the one that i'm going to be using from power queen it's 100 watt and it's got kickstands I can fold it out, set it up beside the truck, or I can throw it on the roof, which that's probably what I'll do most of all is just set the uh, panel across the top of the roof, crack the window. I can run the cables up, plug it directly in there and start solar charging the battery. Then we've got our 1100 watt inverter running. Let me see if I can dim this light a little bit. There you go. So you can kind of see the screen there. You can tell that I've got the refrigerator plugged up. It's pulling wattage for the refrigerator. This is a pure sine wave, so it's okay to run, you know, stuff. You always wanna make sure you use the pure sine wave if you're gonna be running stuff that's important to you. You know, if you're charging your phone and stuff like that, you wanna make sure that you're not at risk of, you know, ruining the battery in your device or, or your machine that you've got plugged up to it. But yeah, 
thing turned out pretty good. It's a simple way to add solar to your vehicle for camping and it's completely out of the way. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with it. Turn this light back on. You can see how I've got the battery and I was able to keep my net so everything's kind of hidden. But you see the battery, I've got it in its spot. It's not going anywhere. The wires are coming down for it and we're all good to go now. What's really cool about me using the Power Queen stuff, like the Power Queen battery that I'm using, the solar controller, and their solar panels is that I'm gonna have options later on. I eventually do wanna put some sort of permanent solar panels on the roof of my truck, and that's all gonna work just fine with this solar controller from Power Queen. So if you guys are looking to add solar to your truck or your camper or whatever, click the link in the video description below. I've got a promo code down there for you to use. Go check out their batteries. This is the smallest 100 amp hour battery that I have seen. It is LifePo 4 lithium, so they're great batteries. And the setup that I just put in this truck is gonna be perfect. I can add batteries to it later. I can add solar panels to it later. And eventually we are gonna to get to where we've got a permanent solar panel on the roof of the truck, feeding down to that solar controller and constantly keeping my batteries charged. That's the plan. For now, we're gonna use their portable solar panel. So when we get to camp, I can find the sun spot coming through the trees, stick this thing right in it and aim it right at the sun and charge the batteries that way. So if you guys do want your solar panel system, y'all make sure you check out Power Queen. Power Queen, I appreciate you working with me again and sponsoring this week's video. You guys, we are one step closer to the ultimate tiny truck camper. Got some really cool stuff coming, so y'all stick around for that, and I'll catch you next week. Peace.